Hi everyone, Miss Melinda here, your spiritual worker from Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services.com. Here to bring you video number six. This is our final video in our series on ancestor veneration, coming from a universal perspective and offering you the foundational tools needed to start your connection, build your relationship with your ancestors from scratch. And in this video, we're going to be talking about additional offerings. So additional offerings are going to come into play after you have already established a strong connection with your ancestors. If you aren't sure what I mean by establishing a strong connection, then you're going to want to go back and look at my other videos, videos one through five. But a brief summary of a strong connection, it's going to mean that you have your relationship established, that you have verified that the spirits you're in contact with are your ancestors, that you're receiving guidance and messages and signs from them on a regular basis, and that you have a relationship with one or two primary ancestors, that your relationship has gone to the next level, and now you can consider what further actions to take to offer them more veneration, to offer them more gratitude, to offer them more loyalty. That's going to come in the form of offerings why are offerings so important in this type of a relationship? They're important because they're creating the energy of reciprocity. They are not only just a physical symbol of reciprocity, they are actually energy which is being absorbed by, being consumed by the ancestors that is giving them the energy to continue the relationship with us. There's a reason it's called feeding. They are actually consuming this energy and they're actually using it for their spiritual evolution, for their growth, and for the energy needed to be present in our lives and to offer us the guidance and the message, the messages, the insights, and the connection that we need with them, right? So, these offerings are going to come in the form of food, they're going to come in the form of alcohol, they can be coffee, um, they can be incense, they can be flowers, um, any number of related items. If you're working with specific individual ancestors, then you're going to want to give them the things that they want, the things that, that they love, the things that are their favorites. You may know this because you knew them when you are alive, when they were alive. You may know this because you've consulted with other individuals in your family about these ancestors, or you may know this because they make it known to you. They may request specific things from you. This information can come to you when you are sitting in prayer at your ancestor altar. It can come to you when you are meditating. It can come to you in your dreams, or it could come to you through other intuitive or psychic means depending on how things work for you. It could come to you as a sudden and clear thought in your mind. It could come to you as a sudden urge or feeling to go ahead and get them something specific. So it's really important that you pay attention to those kinds of signs. You pay attention to those intuitions and that you honor them. You don't second guess them and you act on them thereby giving the ancestors what they have requested from you. They may also request from you additions to their altar, changes to their altar, expansions of their altar, and so forth. It may eventually come into play that individual ancestors would like their own space. This doesn't necessarily have to be a entirely new altar. It could be a corner of the altar or a side of the altar that is dedicated specifically to them. So there are other ways that they may make their needs known as well. They may also request certain actions from you. They may request that you visit their grave. They may request that you leave offerings to them in nature or at their grave or at some other prominent location. They may request that you travel to a 
an ancestral land or to a place where they resided or a place where their ancestors are from so that you make the connection with that land. So they may request further dedication from you and it's important that you pay attention to all of these signs because they are a part of your spiritual evolution and bringing this back to basics it is our spiritual evolution that is at the core of this relationship. So getting back to additional offerings, you're going to want to make sure that you give them additional offerings on holidays, on feast days, on birthdays, and so forth. So on any prominent days, that makes sense for you, makes sense to make sense in accordance with your family lineage, or makes sense in accordance with your ancestral traditions. Um, of course, most cultures around the world have the tradition of venerating ancestors at the end of October, at the beginning of November. We see that in many, many different um, traditions across the world and cross-culturally. This is the time when the veil between the world of the living and the dead is the thinnest. So this is an excellent time for everybody to honor their ancestors with additional offerings. And at times like this, the offerings Offerings may not just be um, food or consumables, they can also be beautiful decorations. So that's an added element. You may want to begin to add to your altar um, items that the ancestors actually loved and enjoyed when they were alive as well. For instance, your great grandfather was a barber. Perhaps he requests a pair of scissors or perhaps you feel that a shaving kit would be appropriate near your altar. This is just one example, things of this nature. Perhaps um, there was a deceased child that came long before you and you feel the urge to give them a toy. Pay attention to those kinds of urges. But especially at this time of year, the end of October, beginning of November, when you're setting up a special festive altar for them, you can put these kinds of objects of that um, bring joy to their lives, the kinds of objects that they would have enjoyed when they're alive, as well as festive objects. You can consider it um, throwing a party in their honor. You could even do a dumb supper. A dumb supper is when you make enough food for your ancestors and you set up places and plates at the table for them and you sit down to a meal with them and you are completely silent during the meal, um, keeping in mind your veneration of your ancestors the whole time and holding in your mind the intention of receiving guidance from them or receiving any messages that you may need at that time. So that's there are many different ways to honor them at special times of the year. You're definitely going to want to make sure that you venerate the specific ancestors you have a relationship with on their birthdays and on any prominent holidays. For instance, I always give my ancestors additional offerings uh, at, at Christmas, at Thanksgiving. If we're celebrating in our home, then my ancestors are a part of that celebration. The additional offerings that I will give them at that time include special candles to make it festive for them, as well as giving them a part of everything that we eat. If we're having a glass of wine, they will get a glass of wine first. If we have made a cake, they will get a slice of cake first. As we move throughout the day, everything that we have prepared, they get the first piece of until their altar ends up looking like a beautiful party in and of itself and they are a part of the celebration. If you find that any of your ancestors were dedicated to or had a special relationship with a specific saint, for example, or a specific deity, or a specific spiritual tradition, then there may be some feast days or some holidays um, to that you would want to set aside to venerate that ancestor. So this is one way to make... Um, a clearer connection of personal veneration with them according to the things that they were most connected to. You may even find that if your ancestor had a specific or a strong relationship with a specific saint or spirit, that you will then be called to have a strong relationship with that specific saint or that specific spirit. So this relationship can also take you 
further places in your spiritual development and in your spiritual connections. In fact, if there are primary ancestors that have made themselves or do make themselves known to you who have very specific spiritual or who had very specific spiritual practices or traditions, then that may be a sign in and of itself that you should then follow those specific practices or traditions. That ancestor may be making the connection with you for the purpose of carrying forward those traditions and um, passing those things along to you. So those are things to pay attention to as well. Okay, so I hope this gives you some good information, some great foundational tools for furthering your relationships with your ancestors. And don't forget to have fun with it as well, especially when it comes to celebrations and holidays. Um, your ancestors are right there alongside you. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and stay blessed.